You guys are not gonna believe what we found in this Amazon puffing snake's jaw. It's totally disgusting, and the thumbnail did not do it justice. And after that, Kevin's gonna be making sure that his baby monitor's first experience with humans is a positive one. Oh, and then finally, I corner Kevin in his ball python room, and I demand him show me his favorite ball pythons this season. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and leave us a comment. We read all of the comments. Well, so some of them I can't understand. They don't make sense. Jake's gonna be our surgeon today. That's right. So Kevin's away on a research trip right now, and as you can see, this snake's got a pretty nasty infection that we need to deal with. What are we gonna be using today? So basically, gonna sterilize with an alcohol pad first, make a very, very, very small incision with a scalpel, massage whatever's in there out, flush it out with some saline solution, a little bit of iodine, and then afterward, we're just gonna coat it with a little bit of blue coat and a bit of an iodine rub. And then we'll keep tabs on it from there. First thing you want to do, sterilize the, the site because we are going to be making a very small incision in there. The last thing you want to do after getting this infection out is one, to have the infection come back or two, to cause another infection. So, just using a sterile alcohol wipe. Clear that off. So, we're going to make a very small incision just right about here. And don't be afraid to talk. So, what's the green stuff? That is just all nastiness and infection. So that's white blood cells that are deteriorated. Just gonna gently squeeze. And look at all that cheese coming out. Hey, can you bring this up a little bit? Let's get to the light. There you go. Oh, that's really Still gross. Wet. Yep. Okay. So how long did it take for this to happen? So this blew up very, very quickly. You can see how deep that got. Now mind you, this is far worse than it actually looks. The skin near the jaw is very, very pliable for their ability to actually swallow larger prey items. So even though this looks like a major incision, it's really not. If you were to seal it up just like that, with a little bit of a pinch, it wouldn't even be noticeable within a day or so. But all this came in within the last 48 hours. Oh, a pee came out of it. Yep. So this is our import? Yep. So this was meant for our breeding program. It will still be a part of our breeding program after it recovers fully. But I noticed a small little lump forming on the jaw. I've been keeping tabs on it for a little over a week now. And within the last 48 hours, all this stuff has emerged. This nice nastiness. Oh, that's gross. As well as all that swelling and it's spread down to about here. Initially, right where that first incision was made, right up here, is where that only lump was. And like I said, within 48 hours, all that spread down to here. And this is just to flush out any blood. Blood, as Kevin said before, is obviously always a good thing. It shows that there's still a healthy supply going through. It's not too, too much to worry about. Now it's all flushed out, we'll just gently massage, see if there's anything else that's ready to come out. And it looks like we're pretty much in the clear. Take some jaws. Try it out just a little bit from the mouth there. So this is just a pre-soaked um, swab with iodine, obviously, as you can guess from the name. So I'm just using this to get inside the wound a little bit, disinfect it, get that last little bit of sludge out of there. Oof. We get this comment a lot. Why don't we put these snakes under so they're asleep? So anesthesia, not just on snakes, but on the vast majority of reptiles is pretty dangerous. Uh, they don't need the same oxygen levels as us, so calculating the exact dosage involves much, much more of a risk. Um, and even the most highly trained anesthesiologists can make mistakes from time to time. That's why a lot of procedures that you see, not just done at this facility, but in general on reptiles, don't really involve them going under that often, if it can be avoided. There right up. Squeeze that out a little bit. Off. Yes. 
Ordinarily, I do something like super glue this shut, so it would create that nice seal. But as I said before, the snake is right in the beginning of a shed cycle. So if I glue that shed, it can cause some complications, sealed, stuck, dead shed in there that can cause secondary infections. I don't really want to do that. The blue coat. I don't ever see Kevin use blue coat. I That's like right. blue coat. I'm a big fan of it. I like blue coat a lot too. Blue coat, blue coat has its pros and cons. Um, it's meant more for livestock and wild animals. So if a researcher has an individual that's injured during the study, this blue dye indicates where the wound is and allows the researcher to keep tabs on the wound from a, um, a distance. Obviously in captivity, we're really hands-on, so we don't need it as much. So, we're just gonna use a little bit of blue coat, and this is pretty much gonna seal off that wound. So it makes the blood coagulate? Right? Yep. Okay. That's exactly right. And it yeah. dyes your skin blue for like weeks. That's, <laughs> it's really cool. The glove helps with that. And once the snake sheds out, if it looks like it still needs it, we'll probably seal it shut with some sort of adhesive. Um, but I fully suspect the snake to recover before that. So what are we doing with it now that it's all done? So the snake's gonna go into observation. It's gonna go into a slightly smaller enclosure, very clean paper, just so that way I can keep tabs on it, see if there's any new blood, um, pus, any sign of infection or potential secondary issues. Okay, you said something about water availability? That's right, so we are gonna limit the water availability until either this seals up completely or we um, administer some type of adhesive to seal the wound shut altogether. I just want this to stay nice and dry so that way it, there's no really chance of any type of bacteria um, or other infection coming through. Once I'm satisfied, it'll regain access to 24 seven water. All right, so here's something. This is a super cinnamon and super cinnamons are known for different problems. Well, this came to me with a um, I guess what I think would be a rodent bite underneath its chin. And uh, it was very, very hard. And over time, I, I was, you know, I was feeding and all that, but it's never been quite right. And this is one of the things that actually happens often with uh, super black pastels and super cinnamons. They're not often quite right. They're often born with cleft lips. They'll have uh, sometimes uh, divots in the spine, kinking. And I'm gonna see if I can actually fix it. Uh, but you can see it has a little bit shorter lower jaw. But uh, she's had some, uh, some you know, struggles in life, and I'm gonna have to finally break down and actually try to go in there and see what's inside there. So you are afraid. You, oh so yeah, I don't, I don't even, I don't know. I mean, just the snake, the fact that it's alive, because I've hatched plenty of super cinnamons, and a lot of times they don't do well. It's just one of like one of those fatal uh, homozygous supers. Mm -hmm. You've talked about that in a video in the past. Super cinnamons are dangerous. Yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of show you guys what I would do to try to, uh, I'm gonna open, I wanna open it up, I wanna clean it up, I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna kinda just take a little sample and see what's going on in there and we're gonna see what that material is. And uh, that's gonna come, what, next week? Next week. All right. Welcome to Nerd. And this is my life, guys. This is Jeremy doing paperwork at Nerd. There's a vacuum on in the background. Yep. It's dark, it's not well lit. Donnie, why don't you make more reptile videos? Because everyone's working when I'm here, and it sucks. Hey, he's got a vacuum on, that's cool. You should, you should shut the vacuum off. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. It's cool, right? This is Spencer. Yeah. Spencer is the butt of all practical jokes that's, here at Nerd. That's true. Didn't, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably find a better job then. No, 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 Donnie, look, look. Get out of here. Measure his man points, and he gets added man points. This is this is a lawsuit. People will go to jail for this. Probably. That's you yeah. can't. Don't film that. That's <laughs> too late. Oh. All right, cool. Thank you guys for all your help making YouTube videos. You guys yeah. are all super interesting. I have baby water monitors. I have uh, just some really nice baby uh, gurus. And uh, what's interesting. I've been just playing with these Sims containers and I've known about John and Dragna's awesome containers, but I got some of the large ones because I have lots of monitor eggs. And this is a way to hatch snake eggs, lizard eggs, whatnot, over a substrateless container with just a water base. And it's pretty, see right there, woo! And then you have a breathable uh, two plates, and then you have these little adjustable rails that allow you to position eggs and prevent them from rolling. Look at that little face. Hi, buddy. 
So these are gu gurus, gurus. Yeah, well, they come from my gubu. He's uh, like a, a super, so all of his babies. So these guys are they're just still start coming out. They've been they slid out and been breathing. What I don't want to do. Oh, look at that. Yes, that's how that's there. Right there, you go. Ready? He comes out with his gelatinous Ghostbuster slime. Oh, it's on my camera. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So this guy, what he's doing is he's thinking, oh my God, this is a, a well, actually I am a monster, but I'm gonna change his perspective of what actually a monster might be. Do you think these moments are very important, Kevin? Yes, I do. Oh my God, it's awful. Yes, I'm just gonna hide in my goo. But see that, so uh, what's good about this, they've fully absorbed their yolk. And generally I just, you know, a lot of times I just leave them alone, but since we're just showing, you know, people that might never see this kind of stuff. So this little guy has fit very well inside this egg. Let me clean away that slime. And then we're gonna put in a little bath and watch what happens. After, yeah, I've been tangling with, uh, what's that, Slimer or something like that in Ghostbusters? Yeah, Slimer. Uh-huh. Well, Ectoplasm. A, I, this is definitely, uh, that lives up to that, you know? And then they do the next movie, they should consult me for the uh, very believable goo. Okay, so these guys, this is their birthday. Come here. And right now, they know that they're at the bottom of the food chain and everything wants to eat them. So this is very critical time in their lives. Hey buddy. And you can see, that's the little umbilicus right there. So that's the belly button. That's where it would attach to a yolk. And as the animal's growing, it's drawing in all the nutrients from the yolk. And if everything goes right, it'll pull the entire yolk in there and you just have just that, that slime in the egg. And then when you look at an egg, there's really, there's nothing going on in this egg after they're gone, except for that bit of slime. Snake eggs and lizard eggs are, uh, excluding like crocodilians in this case, let's say we'll just talk about Varanus. These are pliable, so it's, uh, it's like a leather encasement that is then peppered with all sorts of calcium, and uh, it, but it also allows osmotic atmospheric exchange from it degasses, so it lets out things like CO2 while it's taking in oxygen, which is then feeding uh, the oxygen needs of the embryo as it's developing. Because remember, this is gonna take six to seven months to hatch. So this has been a very, very long wait just to have these little guys. And then usually we take about two months to establish these guys when we're working on the socialization and also the feeding where we start them initially on strict insects and then as time goes on we get them on to chopped eggs chopped meat uh defrosted uh rodents we get from rodent pro uh and then we start adding things like ground turkey chicken beef pork fish and shrimp and those are generally the things we do but initially it's insects but uh there's a lot to actually you know managing numbers of these guys and uh working let's see right now he's reacting to your camera there's definitely, there's something going going on with the autofocus. Look at, here we go, watch this guy, he wants to bite. So the, the biting is just, it's a defensive behavior, which means, uh-oh, see that there, the tongue hanging out? Look at that, he's like, oh, that camera. See, buddy. Look, look, oh, rah, 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 I'm menacing, see that? He's a lot of threatening behavior. But these make wonderful pets. And we are actually working on a lot of uh, dwarf uh, lineage in our, into our Salvators. So you can expect a uh, maybe a third smaller size on a lot of these animals. Because we know that you know having a, a water monitor is a strong commitment because these can be a big part of your family. They can. I have monitors here that are over 20 years old that I produced. Kevin, you've been missing for a week. Were that, you, you were doing secret, top secret research, huh? alligator stuff yeah why, yeah why were you doing that because uh, we like to we research we have a, a, a whole study on a uh, population of alligators yeah and they're in the most northern part of their range 
so you, you were missing from this whole building for a week and we didn't know what to do. Yeah, well now I'm back and it's ball python breeding season. This is uh, an interesting animal because it uh, has this paradox and this is something that uh, we produced and sometimes in this bloodline we get this uh, random paradoxing. I don't know if it's like something I can reliably consider as genetic, but it's pretty cool and we're breeding this. So this would be a cinnamon pastel paradox yellow belly and we're breeding this to uh, a paradox highway from the same lineage and uh, pastel paradox highway. So it's pretty cool, but she's just, you know, that's a, that's a nice hefty ball python. Let's get that she's, home. Uh, coming up on ovulation you can see right here see that swelling uh -huh. see that so you see this you got like this hang right there I, I think we're a lot of people don't show their adult breeder ball pythons well, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show no, no no this is great I like that you're doing it but do you what do you think people don't do that oh uh, they're harder to manage and harder to show you know that's like loaded up certainly when you're taking pictures of them they're uh potentially less cooperative, uh -huh. but I have a lot of all pythons. Do you think some people are like afraid of what the adults will look like compared to the babies? Like they change their, their colors change like a little bit. Oh, they can. Here's a quick little. But you've never been afraid to show no, yours off. I don't, there's a quick odium combo. Uh, I'll, I'll bring out something more. Odium is really cool to talk about. Oh, yeah, this is spot nose. This would be an inferno spot nose, odium lucifer. So an inferno is a hidden gene woma, granite, pastel yellow belly then with spot nose and then odium and lucifer so it's got a lot going on and when it was little it was very reddish mm -hmm. so this is this is a, a breeder male anybody but this could potentially make some really cool stuff so this is a vanilla and a fire and the static gene so the static is like the confusion gene um, Really cool, adds a lot of uh, extra noise. And the way it does it is, is rather unusual. So it's definitely an interesting uh, gene to work with. So it's an epistatic relationship between the fire and the vanilla, which makes like the vanilla cream. And then we throw this other gene, the static gene, which causes it to have all this darkness and this weird coloration. These animals right now are all in reproductive mode, so I've been breeding ball pythons, working hard to actually create some pretty crazy stuff for the season so I can uh, impress myself and then hopefully uh, confuse confuse things. You say impress yourself? Yeah. You're just I, your own worst enemy, I think. I yeah, don't think you're I want to see what we can make with things like this. Do you ever look at other people's Instagrams and go, why not me? Or like, why can't I? You know what I mean? Do you get competitive? Or are you just, uh, just in your own world? Why it, it's, you're certainly competitive. Uh, and there's, that's, it's, uh, you want to try to put it in perspective and be inspired and not completely just like, you know, you could easily be discouraged. Yes. Why don't I have that amazing snake? What were you doing when, you, when I walked in? Were you just looking, seeing how stuff's going? Like, tell me what you were doing. Oh yeah, so in this room, there's 360 females mm -hmm. that I'm just going through the breeding. So my objective is to get things bred. This is, uh, so I showed you, mm -hmm. this is an Inferno Spot Nose, and this is an Inferno Spot Nose Lucifer with hopefully the Odium gene. There you go. But you can see the difference. This one has just more genes. Really pretty. I keep telling Kevin to hold it up so it gets the light. It looks great like this. Like, there we go. Play to the camera, Kevin. There you go. And let me pick another. <laughs> I just got to think hard for a second. No, it's fine. Sunset. Sunset? This I've been hearing about this. These are special. Um, yes. Why? Guess. Why are they special? I don't know. But I have to have it in my arsenal. So this is a Sunset Butter Extreme Gene. So I can breed this to some really cool stuff. Uh, I honestly do not feel that the sunset, we found the right combo to cause it to live exactly up to what people are expecting. So I think there's you know plenty of work to be done and then finding the right genes. That is a pastel fire confusion. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. It, it's that real dark color and how it throws uh, odd patterning and noise. Even the head, the back of the head and everything. It's very, very odd. 
and I have snakes with a serious amount of genes in them that are very hard to even explain. And when I combine this with that, it's really gonna live up to its name. Here's a pastel Inchi Woma Odium. Here's one of the many things Odium does with the pattern vanishing. So this is like super Inchi pastel odium um, i got orange dream into this now and lucifer but it's just see how the pattern yeah so as this animal's been growing the pattern is dissolving and going away which is really really cool super pastel and she odium okay and she lesser excuse me A lot of times I just like, I look at these, I'm not thinking even about like, I just know the snakes inherently well. So this, this animal and what it is. Rob, do it. What? Do the outro. Okay, make sure that if you like this video, that you smash that like button, subscribe to the New England Reptile channel, uh, turn on your post notifications so the next time we put out a video, you'll be able to see it first before anyone else. And leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more videos like this. We see lots of stuff going on here that the average person might not see. So if you want to see stuff like this, make sure that you comment that down below. Awesome. And this is Jake. Yeah. Real Jake from Snake Farm. <laughs>